Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to Doom Productions. And today is a pretty special filmmaker hangout. We've got Joel Haver here in town. And hey guys, to, yeah. welcome to my van. I hope you like my van here. It's a lot bigger than we thought it would be. In the video, it looks... It's deceptive because it goes up a lot. Like this oh. is the second floor. Is it like one of those kind of nice, <laughs> like, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Is this custom or did you just... Did yeah, you just, I just built it. Oh, okay. I just thought it up myself, yeah. I like it. It's cool. <laughs> Nice. Okay, I guess here's the history about our history of Joel. Yeah. We discovered Joel through Dan Lotz. Mm -hmm. We reached out once we made Oh Brother, and we've kind of been kind of, uh, I don't know what you, we would email, I guess, a little bit back and forth. We would comment on each other's work. Pen pals, if you will. Pen pals is <laughs> Pen a good. Pen pals, yeah. Um, we're friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Friends on Facebook. Facebook official. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought not. there was a more. <laughs> I thought there was more to this explanation. We're just friends. Yeah. yeah. Usually, we we have people on the show. We're promoting their work, um, which you know, if you haven't seen Joel's work, please go check it out. I'm sure you need help promoting. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Uh, we'll put it in for that you. That would actually mean a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but Joel's just our friend. Yeah. Yeah, a good friend. Uh, it's great to meet you guys. Yeah. I think it was uh, Jordan who reached out first with mm -hmm. Oh Brother when mm -hmm. you guys made Oh Brother, and he uh, said it was partially inspired by Island. Yeah, and I got really excited. I checked it out pretty well that day, I think, if not soon that week, yeah. which I mm -hmm. usually can't do with movies, but I just happened to have time, <laughs> you yeah. know. And uh, yeah, it was great, and I've been following you guys since. You guys have been crushing it, making great movies, and uh, yeah, 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 it's been great. Um, Shoot, it's so much. There's so many questions, and at the same time, I can't pick one. I'm how would like, you? Yeah, I don't. I don't want to pick boring questions you've probably heard before. But how would you define yourself? Filmmaker, YouTuber, I, uh, a, a vlogger, or, or sketch artist? I'm not sure if that's like. I, I don't know what you call it. I think it's all the above. It's just a question of like the connotation that comes with each mm -hmm. term. Because mm -hmm. I'm somebody. Everything I make is a video because it's on mm -hmm. YouTube. Yeah. Everything I make is also a film because I think film is an all-encompassing term that signals to the medium, it signals to audio-visual. Mm -hmm. And then there's like, it's art. And that's the next level up. Everything I make is art because what is art? It's something, you express yourself, you express something, you create mm -hmm. something from, from nothing or f using what you know or using your experiences. and. So the same thing can be said for what am I, a video maker, YouTuber, filmmaker. I, I think, you know, <laughs> there, there's like different levels of connotations with each because it's like, oh, he's a video maker. And I think people can use that against you, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in a way like, oh, you just make videos, you don't make films. Oh, you just make, YouTube, you're a YouTuber, you're not a filmmaker, you're not this higher thing, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then I always like to look to the highest term and use that when I can. Mm -hmm. So like filmmaker, I like saying that. That's what mm -hmm. I like saying, because it's what I am. And it's also like kind of shoving it in the face of people who have these narrow conceptions of what a filmmaker can be and what a filmmaker should be. Mm -hmm. And um, and then yeah, even further, I don't say it often just because it's too vague, I think, but I'm an artist, you know, I, I like doing a wide variety of things. You know, in my own work, I do a little bit of everything I do you know all the cinematography acting i act in most of my stuff yeah. you know there, there's a lot of different skill sets that come in but then i also like drawing i like writing poems and while those are not the things i like get the most views on it's also things i create so broadly i'm an artist mm -hmm. and this is a very long answer to <laughs> this question but i think the the valuable thing behind this answer is it's it's people will try to tell you what you are and what you are is what you say you are. You know, people mm -hmm. try to take ownership. And I think I've kind of won a lot of people over or not won them over, but shown them that like you can use these terms that have been, you know, set aside for more official, more artful things like film, short film, feature film. You can use them, but like when I was trying to grow my channel, I always got these Reddit debates and mm. stuff that is not worth your time. Yeah. But like with people who are like, 
why are you calling these films? These are videos. These are sketches. These are, mm-hmm. and there you face these people who are discouraging people for no reason. Like, why do they care so much? Mm-hmm. Why do people care about semantics and terms? And and I think the end to that is you just be objective. You just say yes, this is what I am. Have a nice day. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's so funny. It's so arbitrary. A lot of those labels because it's like, if it's on YouTube, it's a video. But if you submit it to a festival it's a film you know yeah. what I mean? it's that kind of like weird just arbitrary things that people make these boundaries and like if rules. you submit it to a festival and then it's on youtube it's still a film because it went through a festival yep. strainer yeah. Yep. yeah no exactly yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy yeah and i don't know i mean i think when i saw island to me because that was the first one i saw mm-hmm. that to me was like oh my gosh someone had made a movie on youtube it blew me away um and that's all I wanted to say. Well, I even <laughs> just made a movie, but like put it on YouTube. Like, like I, did, yeah. you, you didn't submit it anywhere, did you? Did you no, say? Island. Yeah. I re- so I, I initially released it on my Patreon for like mm-hmm. a month. It was just on there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then it was on uh, Vimeo just because I got in my head. I'm like, oh, do I want to, you know, do I want to, because uploading stuff to YouTube, there is some vague agreement that like, okay, Google has the permission to use this. And if you put it on YouTube, Google can do whatever it wants with your stuff. You retain full ownership, but there mm-hmm. is this. So at the time I got in my head, I'm like, where do I put my movies? But Vimeo yeah. sucks. You got to pay. And then if yeah. you stop subscribing, they delete all your stuff. Like mm-hmm. it's horrible. So I'm like, eventually I came around and put everything on YouTube. But Island never got submitted to festivals. That was a movie made entirely from the ground up to be put online for mm-hmm. yeah. free eventually i think that was so cool for us to find because we i mean we still like talk about what the future of us submitting to film festivals mm-hmm. would look like but that was where we were at for a really long time with most of our stuff like we had things that we knew like oh this is for fun it's going on youtube but there were like short films where we were like this is made for a film festival and that's where we're going to put this and so having like that seeing someone make a feature and like, yeah, this goes on YouTube. This is where she's going to live. That was so like, whoa, okay. That's just different. We hadn't rec- like seen that before. So that kind of changed the game for us, especially in a time when COVID was just starting. And so now where festivals were all online and it didn't really seem that important to submit to a festival if you're just watching it online anyway. So it seemed no different than YouTube. So it kind of caught us at the right moment where it motivated us to start putting our stuff, ourselves out in that same way. And so mm-hmm. it was really cool to see. So. And I, I love that. I, I, that's why I do it. Firstly, because I think it's the best way to distribute a movie, and in particular, a no-budget movie. Mm-hmm. It's just the best way to get it out there. Mm-hmm. Secondly, it encourages people. You don't see a movie in a theater and think that that's in reach. Mm-hmm. You don't like go to a theater and think, I could do that this year. You're like, in 10 years, I could be in a theater. You know. Yeah. But if you see somebody just throw something on YouTube, and it's a very like simplistic, not even simplistic like conceptually or you know in its themes, but just simplistic in its production. It's in reach, and then just even the distribution models in reach. You know yeah. how to hit upload. You know? Yeah. So that's the second reason I do it. Just encourage people because like that's the best thing I've heard. Like you guys and many other people that are like, you show me, I can make a movie and people would watch it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's been cool to see this year, like from when we started kind of recognizing this bigger sphere of filmmakers on YouTube and um, interacting with them, it started out as like, oh, this is so cool. Like a new movie came out this week, like from some YouTuber. Let's it was watch like, it. there's 20 it, of us. There's 20 <laughs> of us. And now it's like, we can't keep up. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like with keeping in the loop of who's releasing stuff and like Dan Lotz's folk filmmaker playlist where mm-hmm. he, he puts a lot of stuff, it's like, exhausting to try and think about all the movies that are now out there that are being released for free and that's like so i mean that's the best problem to be having it's Mm -hmm. definitely not a bad thing but it's like man this is so much out there it's amazing like i I make the promise that if anyone sends me a movie i'll watch it and you know i've since then gotten a a much bigger audience which makes that (laughs) promise i now regret that promise (laughs) no i don't regret it but i've always said like the best thing that could happen for that promise is if there's too much stuff that it's impossible to fulfill. Yeah. Because yeah. then we know that people are actually getting out of making stuff. You yeah. Know? yeah. And totally. that was like the goal of the promise. It was like, 
I want to see a world where everyone's just making movies themselves for the love of the medium, for the love of creating something above all else, above mm -hmm. like some ladder climbing venture, which a lot of movies are forced to be in a festival mm -hmm. environment. It's like, this is my step to getting funding for my next step yeah. to get funding for the movie I actually want to make. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's just, uh, you're always so, so many steps away from the thing you want to do. And it's just like, make the thing you want to do, the thing you can do right now. Yeah. And um, that, that to me is like, what's so exciting about what's happening on YouTube, on the internet, everywhere. It's just like people are reclaiming the medium for filmmaking for filmmaking's sake. Mm -hmm. It's not for business sake. It's not for some grander, I don't know, ego sake, like, hey, I want to be famous. I want to be this. People are exploring the medium again in a way that I don't think we've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's been great and i think what's so like i mean if anyone sees any of your films there's definitely a voice and a uniqueness there and it's something that i i both could and i couldn't see that being produced by hollywood i could see it like it's similar in the same way like nathan for you or like matt johnson and like the, the dirties and nirvana band the show it's similar in style there but like the kinds of work you're making is like I see you walking into a room at Hollywood and be, people being like, what is this? I don't get, like, I don't see any it clicking with like these out of touch studio executives. Yeah. I, but, but it's so beautiful that that thing can exist on YouTube and it has an audience and people who connect with it. Yeah. Um, what's, what's you, what do you think your best movie is? My best movie? I, I know you love them all, but, <laughs> and I love, we love them all too. I, yeah. When I think of best, I think the thing that represents what I want to achieve with the medium the mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. and in my own unique voice. And that to me is pretend that you love me and maybe Island as well. I, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the day, I'd give them a tie, you know, yeah. and because um, I think those represent me pushing the medium in interesting directions and like you just said, in a direction that can only exist online. You know, mm -hmm. you know. I think uh, my most studio, if I ever did one, even though all my stuff costs less than sub 200 bucks, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, my most studio movie is probably taking a little time to feel sorry for myself. It's mm -hmm. very like classically shot. It's even all cinema scope, you know, <laughs> it, it's like just a romance narrative. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm proud of that movie, but it's like, probably my least favorite because there was never a challenging moment and our not like even production wise just like artistically like it was too simple to make mm -hmm. it was too like everything fell into place it, it, it bang bang boom you know yep. but pretend that you love me an island i think there's so much to the process that is communicated through the film and that process isn't something you'd see funded. It's not something yeah. that needs to be funded because it doesn't cost money. But mm -hmm. each of those were totally improvised. There was no, there was no like start to finish plan for what the movie would be or what it would mm -hmm. look like. It was just like, okay, pretend that you love me was, okay, let's get these women to film these first dates. And I, I that's a, such a vague way to say it, but. Mm -hmm not to spoil it because there are answers that change what those actually are but mm -hmm. but th that's the start of pretend that you love me and then we just said okay what's next okay what's next okay what's next then my real life gets involved and then this and then that and it's mm -hmm. this and then uh island was kind of uh the thing i made first using the same formula it's like what am i feeling today okay i built an island what am i feeling today what does that turn into through uh <laughs> through an island like yeah so it's like am i feeling like i wish i had someone to talk to okay i'll build a little puppet and talk to it am i feeling like mm -hmm. i'm like you know <laughs> am i feeling like i'm spiraling in circles maybe i should get the fuck off this island and like, the <laughs> movie takes a different direction yeah and um and um i i think i think that is why those are my favorite because they're created so far distance from how you're told to make movies. No screenplay, no no casting, no no uh, extreme pre-production, 
no, no, like, uh, you know, no, like approval meetings or no, no, mm -hmm. um, not even approval in the sense of like, oh, I got to get a company or a distributor to approve it or a financer, mm -hmm. just approval in the sense that people are like, uh, you know, like get friends to check on every step of your process. And um, it's a bit egocentric maybe, but I think artists should be allowed to trust themselves sometimes and just mm -hmm. make whatever the hell they want and see what it turns into. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I'm so happy about with those films is I never questioned myself. I just trusted myself to make something out of nothing. And mm -hmm. it turned into something, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's great. Oh, and pretend That You Love Me has this great moment. I don't want to spoil it. There's a thing that happens, I think, about midway through the movie. How much can I say without spoiling? I think it's a musical number. I think I'll yeah. just say that. That blew me away. And I was like, that was a moment where I was like, this movie is something else. Like, I, you think it's one thing. And I think that might be the moment in the movie where it starts to like kind of go into all these different directions that you don't even think about. And mm -hmm. that's where I was like, I think I would agree with your... I think I agree with you. I share that kind of feeling of like, oh my, yeah, I think pretend that you love me like feels like this unique, holy Joel Haver thing that couldn't exist elsewhere mm. and anywhere else. And before I forget, I don't know if we want how much, cause I don't want to spoil the movie if yeah. people haven't seen it. There's a scene in it that I've been, that I keep forgetting to ask you about. I, cause part of the fun of though your movies is, is this real or is this not real? Mm -hmm. There's a scene in pretend that you love me that I want to ask you about, but I don't want to spoil it. So I'm not going to ask you on camera. Yeah, yeah. I have to ask you about Well, I'll ask off camera, but I get what you're getting at. And usually I walk that line even in question. So mm -hmm. if you're expecting an answer, if something's real or not, I yeah. usually just say, because the, you know, thematically it works either way. And that's kind of the point, yeah. you know, if, if something like in my movies, if something's real, it's like, okay, well, then the Joel character, mm -hmm. which is actually Joel, did something maybe a little fucked up or a little, you know, yeah. a little, uh, not fucked up, but unethical. Yeah. And then why did he do this? What pushed him to do this? Was it loneliness? Was it pain? And then the other answer is it's fake. Why is he faking this? And then it's like, and then allowing both of those to exist doubles down on all those meanings and mm -hmm. it creates this rich web of theme and, yeah. And, and um, that that's like why I like leaving stuff up to interpretation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the question, the answer is less interesting than the question. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. One of my favorite bits, I'm assuming, I just want to keep spoiling everything. Because yeah. we've never talked in person about yeah. your movies or anything. Yeah. But I will, I will say this. Uh, I'm going to be famous. There's a bit yeah. where you go into a museum mm -hmm. and it's just the audio of yeah. you going down to the cure curator that is one of, that kills me every single time i love that moment <laughs> that's a moment that's like okay i'm pretty i'm like a hundred percent sure that had to be real because that reaction the dude gave was so genuine <laughs> like you might have been an editing genius and you might have like faked it with adr and stuff but it, like just the way it was all put together i was like mm -hmm. oh my gosh this is this is incredible so when you see those moments where you're like i know that's real there's no way they could have faked that it gives you this like sense of victory in a weird way you're like oh my gosh either like i figured out or like good for the filmmaker good for the character whoever it's just this fun engaging part like you said of like what's real what's fake where does the movie come in where does real life come in and all that stuff it's just it's a such a fun part about your all your work is just that you're dancing that line of reality or not yeah i think i'm going to be famous is a great like transitional point in my work because mm -hmm. i think I'm, I'm going to be famous and I, I made taking a little time as actually an offshoot of I'm going to be famous. Oh, kind really? Of oh, nice. Because that, that part of the I'm going to be famous is I had to have a starring role in a feature film. And eventually I realized no one was going to cast me. That's anything, amazing. So I had to make a feature film starring myself. Uh -huh. So, so, uh, <laughs> so I, so I guess like, I mean, that thematically sums up filmmaking right there I mean, mm -hmm. to me that's what filmmaking is it's like don't wait for the opportunities to come and i even say that in the series you know just make your own opportunities and you'll find so much more enrichment there and um but i'm going to be famous marks probably 
the me actually being on camera, you know, mm -hmm. most of my features before that, and especially just like my, my shorts and my output in general was always me behind the camera with an occasional cameo, some videos I'd, I'd appear in. And then like I had this giant web series because I was supposed to make a thesis film for uh, my film school in my mm -hmm. senior year. And they're like, make a 10 to 12 minute short. And I'm like, I can make oh a, I'm like, I can make a 10 minute short in like a week and it uh -huh. would be really good. Why do I need eight months to do this? You yeah. know? So then I made a five hour web series <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to do something crazy. And, and then I'm like, okay, if I'm going to be filming this all semester, or two semesters, I'm like, okay, who's, who's the actor who's readily available? Me. You know, mm -hmm. who, and then I, of course, there's a bunch of embarrassing, weird stuff I had to do. I'm like, who, who's the one willing to do that? Me. And then, yeah. And then like, it started off as this stunt, jokey. I don't know, like Borat is the right comparison, but kind of like Borat mm -hmm. thing, where it's like, let's do weird stuff in public. You know, maybe Jackass or maybe uh, mm -hmm. something comparable to that. And then it, as I went on, I, I, it kind of chronicles in a very real way me realizing I don't have to put on a show to create a compelling thing. Mm -hmm. And me realizing that real life is compelling and, and creating, uh, creating things that feel like real life are compelling. And, um, and then, it, so like the, the museum curator, it's like, it's like whether or not it's real it is interesting because it's that same thing. It's like, real or fake it comes from desperation mm -hmm. it's me trying to become famous and that's like a last ditch it's like if he's faking it that's sad because it's like why like why fake something where you get rejected and, <laughs> and then like if it's real it's sad because it's like god he broke into a building essentially <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he's documenting a crime or he's documenting what looks to be like unethical i never say like it was actually a crime. Never admits anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, um, but like, that's when I, like, that, that That was the idea that stuck with me the most from I'm Going to Be Famous. My mm -hmm. life, as is, is film. It, it, is, it is a compelling narrative. Every one of us, like, the best story we'll ever experience is our own life. And, like, if you could capture a fraction of a fraction of that in some way it just whether it's just by setting up the camera and capturing scenes of your day-to-day -day life you're gonna have something compelling because if you don't believe that the life you live is compelling why are you living you know mm -hmm. if you don't have this like deep down belief that like your day-to-day -day existence is worth living you would just kill yourself you know mm -hmm. and i think we all have that belief and uh you know i think we are we're pushed away from it we get depressed we get sad we we look at ourselves and we're like, what, I'm doing nothing, I'm doing nothing. But like that struggle in and of itself is compelling. And then sharing myself and being like, here's my life front and center, like pretend that you love me especially is just like, by the end it's like, here's the fucking shit I'm going through and here's what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Sharing that is an act of, of empathy. It's, it, to me, it's an act of empathy. It's an act of my fucking life matters. And through you experiencing that, I hope you realize yours does too. Yeah. I hope you realize your life is compelling. Your life is filled with ups and downs and just, a, you know, your loneliness matters. Your loneliness is, is compelling. Your loneliness is a story and you're living this story and it sucks to live it, but it's a fucking story, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that, that is what, that, that, that's the long, short of it. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Poetry. Um, I'm just gonna check our time too. Okay, yeah. If we need to hit yeah. record again, we can no, do at, that. We're at just like 25, uh, 26 right now, so. What do we think? Do we wanna keep going longer? We can hit, we can go for another 30 minutes or? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it a little longer. Okay. Leave the audio running and I'll okay. sing it. Oh no! no. We good? So when you turned in the the mo the movie for your thesis, did you show them the five hour web series <laughs> or the feature film cut of it? 
Well, the feature film cut came later because it was on its own channel. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to get that, uh, kind of wanted to get that on the main channel. But um, I just showed the last 10 minutes. I oh, just, I just gotcha. showed the ending where I summarize gotcha. everything. Because I'm trying to picture them like watching you for 30 minutes crawling around yeah, New York yeah. City. <laughs> I, the I crab do like the whatever. feature length version of uh, In A Lot. I, I, but I think the web series does You dive it. deeper into yeah. it. I, I like that aspect of the, it. The web series, most of the length comes from absurdly long stuff that, you know, like, and that's what I leaned into that. Like when I realized like, cause I was thinking while I was filming, I'm going to be famous. I was like, this could be a feature that I uh -huh. submit to festivals, like a documentary feature. And then once I ha realized like, as a web series, I could just have me actually crab walk for 30 minutes. And that is funny. Like me trying to crab walk to top to bottom of Central Park. Like that's comedy, but it's also really fucking sad. You it's know? like, it's funny and how sad and pathetic it is. It reminded me of, oh, I can't remember the filmmaker. He's from, I think, Hong Kong or Taiwan. There's that, there's the film of the monk. Simon Lang. Yeah, 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 walking yeah. through Paris. That's what it reminded me yeah, of. It's, it becomes a fun, like a, a, a Where's sad, Waldo a kind of thing. A funny version of that. Of yeah, that. Yeah. What, Journey to the West, is that what it's called? That one, I know he has one called just Walker, or uh -huh. the Walker, and that's the character, but I think he made a bunch of them. And mm. one might be Yeah, but I, I, yeah, I, it's, it's like a funny, messed up version yeah. of that in New York. Instead of a monk, it's Joel. Instead of Paris, yeah. it's, it's New York city and all that and yeah i got really experimental because i was the idea of the web series and i i always say oh i don't like to talk about what my stuff means and then i mm -hmm. use that as an excuse to talk <laughs> about it but um <laughs> but like but the idea of the web series version was that it was so over long and so drawn out that in my quest to get famous i even lose the audience of the series and by the end no one's watching <laughs> And, and it could just because it's like it's these desperate things and it's just like the 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 viewership matches the themes matches the you know matches the story mm -hmm. you know and uh by the end it's like the, my favorite part of the series if not maybe one of them but is i did a whole stand-up show just to my dad and the show ends with just a 12 minute shot of an empty audience and mm -hmm. i'm like no one's watching anymore and that and i'm like that's the point i'm making stuff just to make stuff there's not you know and and it's sort of a denunciation of like fame and uh filmmaking as we were talking about before as this stepping stone it's like mm -hmm. everything i make is a stepping stone to being on the red carpet everything i make is a stepping stone to making a bigger thing mm -hmm. it's like just making stuff with the people around you is the most fulfilling thing you're going to do in your life and, yeah. Well, that reminds me of a bit of acting advice I heard from somebody. I can't remember who said it, but someone was asking this actor. They were like, oh my gosh, it's so depressing. I'm in LA. Every single week I go to like five different auditions. I read the part. They don't accept me or I'll get called back. And I don't, it's so long. It's just chaotic and blah, blah, blah. I'm sick of this auditioning process. And the other actor was just like, well, that's the work. You're not, you, you have to put 100% of your effort into each performance you do, whether it's on Broadway or in a movie or just in a room with a couple of people, you have to enjoy that process. Like you're not gonna, don't look at your audition as a stepping stone for fame and fortune. Look at it as a chance, hey, I get to act for a living. I might not get paid, maybe two people will see it. But isn't that great that you get to prepare to act in front of people mm -hmm. and enjoying the process rather than reaching for some goal that you'll probably never get and all that kind of stuff. And there's something to be said about enjoying that journey instead of, oh my gosh, we have to get to get to Hollywood, get to fame and fortune and all that. And I go a step further and say, stop auditioning, make something. Yeah. You know, yeah. which is I, yep. Yeah, yep. the yep. obvious answer. Because I know uh, this is a quote of a quote. I think it was <laughs> Matt Johnson, Nirvana, the band. Yeah. In an interview, he said, Mike Myers said, uh, <laughs> I just, I stopped trying to get noticed and I just noticed myself or something like that yeah. along mm -hmm. those lines, you know? Mm -hmm. And just like, it's so easy nowadays to make something. Mm -hmm. I, we're, we're gone are the days where actors are just gonna pop up out of nowhere 
like the only actors that are, that's going to happen for are going to be famous people's relatives. You know, you're going to have like, yeah. you know, you're going to have Emma Stone's daughter in a movie someday, you yeah. know, or something yeah. like that. But everyone who is going to be known now will be people who made stuff themselves. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's going to be known now is going to be a YouTuber who gets picked up to be in movies yeah. or is a TikToker who gets picked up to be in movies because uh, there's no better way to get noticed, you know, mm -hmm. when that the audition is the internet. The uh, the internet yep. is your audition now. You know, going going to an audition is is like the three hours you could have made a short and put a, put it online, and yep. you could have gotten a hundred people rather than two people in a room watching. Mm -hmm. You know, or mm -hmm. you could have had a thousand people or a million people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's fantastic to see like just how easy it all is so accessible it's yeah. easy to make stuff not easy to get yeah. it noticed but it's easy. yeah at the very least you can make stuff now and yeah i say whatever you do to like achieve your goal if you can do it in a way that you're already making what you want to make that's perfect you yeah. know if, if you want to be an actor just start making videos online you're already acting you know, mm -hmm. if you want to be a director, same exact thing. Start making shorts on YouTube. You're already directing. You're already making films. It's like, yeah. it's like all these other routes of like be a PA, you know, or do commercial gigs to be an actor, you know, acting commercials. It's just like such a distraction. Mm -hmm. And then you're like doing stuff you hate yeah. relating to the art you want to make. And then you sour the art for yourself because mm -hmm. you're you have all these connotations or associations with like oh filmmaking is this gross pa <laughs> thing where people treat me like dirt and i get a hundred bucks and i mm -hmm. go home and cry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too real yeah. it's too real and it's a real struggle because that's the way right now mm -hmm. like that's what film schools teach you that's what hollywood tells you um but they kind of forget that filmmaking like it's like a jungle like and again like there's no one way to go through the jungle and it's something you can do right now. Um, and that's kind of the mentality we have is like, mm -hmm. hey, isn't it great we get to hang out and make movies together and we can do whatever we want. Let's just see where this can go. Let's see what opportunities come up. Let's see what kind of stories we can tell and the friends and other filmmakers we get to meet along the way. Yeah. Um, again, going back to enjoy the process of it all and just treating it not as like because otherwise, when you treat films as stepping stones, you kind of also treat crew members like stepping stones and mm -hmm. like your friends, like I'm using you for this, where it's like we kind of look at it for more collaborative, like, hey, you were awesome at comedy. Come hang out with us and we're going to be mm -hmm. funny together and yeah. we're going to make something beautiful. And yeah. um, the ownership goes beyond us. Yeah. Like it's their movie just as much as ours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. regardless of you know they're just showing up to act they didn't write it it's like no that's still them at the end of the day and no so, one and and yeah. when you can when you have the ability to make something whenever you want the only person you have to blame for not making something is yourself like mm -hmm. you can't be sitting in a room being like how come hollywood won't come for me? how come no one's noticing yeah and it's it's like well if you're not doing anything then of course no one's yeah. going to notice get a camera and go make something don't sit around yeah. mm -hmm. asking people to give you money to do something just go yeah. make it and, yeah. and you know show them with with your actions that you're you're a good filmmaker or good actor or whatever yeah. yeah and i think it's something that anyone you know i always say like no one is special like not in a grander sense like people are special of course mm -hmm. in the nice <laughs> comfy sense <laughs> but, like, but like no one's special at, no one's doing something you can't do you know no yeah. you know unless your goal is for some reason to make iron man it's like why would you want to make iron man people are already doing that you know mm -hmm. yeah. like i wish i could make iron man 4 it's like what why <laughs> but like you get what i'm saying like everyone just practiced you know mm -hmm. every like everyone you see on youtube making great stuff they just did it a lot until they made good stuff you know and um i was just talking earlier to my friend about uh the best thing to do as an artist is to kill the perfectionist in you. Cause mm -hmm. I have so many friends, so many people I went to film school with that just stopped making stuff. They, they shot like one movie, like a short after film school and they just never finished it. Cause mm -hmm. it's just like, 
they got so in their head it wasn't perfect it wasn't great and the irony is the way to there's, there's no such thing as perfection but the way to take steps towards things you'd be proud of is to just finish stuff and move on to the next stuff and mm-hmm. just release a lot of things you know because like that that's the system i've used it's just like make such a ridiculous amount of stuff that like everything eventually becomes good you mm-hmm. know you're just so good at doing everything and this sounds so cocky but it's just like you know you're an expert after ten thousand hours and i've done ten thousand hours of everything you know mm-hmm. and, and, and but like but like if you just do stuff enough you become good at all that stuff yeah. you know and it, it i guess that's as simple as i can put it there's just so much value in having momentum behind you because if you're stopping all the time and taking months between like you can never build up like that mm-hmm. muscle it's yeah. i mean it's going to the gym it's working out it's that same thing where you're exercising your creative muscles and if you aren't taking that time it's like well you're just not going to have that same level of proficiency so you have to keep putting in the time Look at uh, Cody, our buddy Cody. He's like making feature after feature right now. It's like, dang, he's yeah. like, and he tweeted not too long ago, like, yeah, it's easy if I do it this way where it's feature after feature because I have that momentum behind me already. So it's like, yeah, you just got to do yeah. it. And it. Yeah, and that's not obviously You guys everyone, did that but. too. You guys handed out House in October, I think came out the same week or something. They came out the same day. And there <laughs> yeah. was a stagger between when they were yeah. shot, but we shot October in 15 days, shot yeah, yeah. and released in 15 days. Yeah. yeah. So that was, Damn. that I, was boot camp. <laughs> I've been dying to do a quick feature again, because I did forget about everything for a while, which took mm-hmm. six days to shoot. And that yeah. was out the next week, you know, and mm-hmm. yeah. so like, there is this is a different conversation opening a new can of worms but Mm -hmm. there is this discussion in filmmaking and i think we've seen it online now is that like filmmaking feature filmmaking in particular can be anything and Mm -hmm. people always limit themselves i gotta make this big ambitious big ass movie yeah you know it's like (laughs) it's like it's like just like like Dan Lodz did Pure Cinema, and mm-hmm. that pissed people off because it's like he called it a movie, and it's just him talking on the phone. And it's just like, but why can't that be a movie? It's mm-hmm. like, it's like, what's the arbitrary amount of cuts that make something a movie? Take mm-hmm. something from like a podcast to a movie. What's the arbitrary amount of like shots that turn something into a movie? It's like, well, like. Uh, victoria is all done in one shot yeah. mm-hmm. so what's the difference if that shot doesn't move or mm-hmm. <laughs> that shot is just still and it's just one person talking it's like you, if you just start putting stuff out like if you just like film yourself film like six conversations with friends just like six different like eight minute conversations string them together call it a movie call it hanging out you know mm-hmm. and i think uh this, I haven't watched any, but this guy Ignacio yeah. is making a yeah. couple movies that but, are just just mm-hmm. super conceptual, super basic. Like I think one's called "I Don't Feel Good." Maybe staring out a window would help, or, I, mm-hmm. I, or something like that. And it's just like a forty-minute shot of him staring out a window. And obviously, the point, the the duration, the runtime is the point of that. You're not gonna watch it. You could, you, but that's the point. That's mm-hmm. like it's like it's like. It's not just the movie that it's not just the act of staring out a window that will help. It's the act of just creating something that will help. And I, I, I like that idea. I haven't watched it as I imagine most people haven't because it's a 40 minute shot of a guy looking out a window. But, but if you just allow yourself to just let go of this pretension that you have to make an ambitious thing every time you have to make something that people would look at and be like, it's a movie. And, um, and uh, what was it? Speaking of Cody, this guy Cody follows tweeted something like, "Like, if like he said if like folk filmmakers got their hands on it, like a, a crane and a drone, they could like you know m- make their stuff look just as good as Hollywood movies." And I'm like, our stuff shouldn't look like Hollywood movies. Like that's the wrong goal. Yeah. Like make stuff that feels scrappy. Lean mm-hmm. into the scrappiness. Lean into the rawness. Let it be flawed. Let it be imperfect. Let mm-hmm. it be broken. Hey, like I have shots and pretend that you love me. Microphone just fucked up, and I'm like, this isn't something I could do another take of. You know, this is a you know. Yeah. So it's just like there it is. That's what happened, and 
pretend that you love me unlucky because it's structured in a way that you're aware of the filmmaking so mm -hmm. it's allowed to be broken and messy yeah. well, but yeah. do stuff like that mm -hmm. allow yourself those things that that embrace your both your limitations and like if you're making a no budget movie your goal shouldn't be to like disguise it as a high budget movie your mm -hmm. goal should be to think what does a no budget movie mean and what can i do with that meaning thematically and conceptually yeah mm -hmm. i'm going to throw cinematographers under the bus but like when you're talking about like let the scrappiness come through like it's so easy to make your stuff look good mm -hmm. that's like i feel like in a lot of ways like the everyone makes good stuff there's a million tutorials on youtube of how to make a cinematic shot or how to make a cinematic movie so it's like okay everyone can make something cinematic so what differentiates you what makes you better and i think leaning into that honesty that a lot of folk filmmakers have or whatever you want to call it independent youtube filmmakers whatever term you apply to it, like there's an honesty and a truthfulness that I think is uh, the thing that has a draw and makes people want to watch. Um, Cause it's unlike Hollywood. Cause if you're not watching Hollywood, then obviously you're trying to find something different, but if you're, mm -hmm. and so there's something that's like so valuable in doing that. And when I shot my movie house, which was also inspired by Island, um, I was trying to shoot a different movie for that summer um, after Jordan had made Oh Brother and being the, director of photography for our channel obviously it had to look perfect and I was shooting on like a cinema camera um I had like a big monitor it was like the works um and I was shooting it by myself which makes it 10 times harder automatically but I like got so fed up with how like not perfect it was that the mm. perfection kind of freezes you so I was like screw it I'm shooting a movie on a phone and I was house sitting and I had like two nights left I was like I gotta shoot something in these next two nights so I got my phone and just shot house which was my first feature and it's like looks really grainy and pixely and terrible and i'm like good that was like that was the goal for me of like all right i gotta let go of anything perfect about this movie mm. and cut to him shooting the bell rings and we have to reshoot an entire day of work because there's a tiny little hair i know in the, well, in the lens. well when you talk about it, I'll, I'll redeem myself on the bell rings though it's the first time i shot a movie with wireless audio and there's a lot of crinkling and crackling of clothes like i just yeah. didn't do it right um and it's like, okay, we're gonna work with this messed up audio for this movie. And it's now a part of the aesthetic of it where I've like had to just be like, all right, we're not ADRing this thing. Yeah. Just cause I don't want to do that. So it's now having to deal with, okay, that's my curveball. is how do I deal with a movie that has audio that's not how I would prefer it and mm -hmm. having to work with it. And I think that's part of the fun and the challenge. I mean, you, filmmaking is not easy. So like you have to have that kind of like elbow grease kind of mentality like, oh, I got to just figure this out and find a solution. So that's my, that's my fun thing I get to deal with. Um, mm. But yeah, it's, that's just such a fun thing. I think being a, a puzzle solver as a filmmaker is like my favorite part. And I think a lot of us probably feel the same way of just making the thing and making it work. Yeah. I don't have a point where I was going through with that. I just had to piggyback off you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think what you did with house was great. Cause I think, I think it's exactly like what I was saying It's like, it's a movie that wouldn't be the same if it was shot on a nicer camera and if it was done up, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you looked at like, like, I get so sick of this like shot on iPhone, like <laughs> yeah. between the commercials and like some of the stuff Steven Soderbergh does, mm -hmm. it's like shot on iPhone, but then you see the behind the scenes photos and they got like got you know, rigs, like 30 yeah. crew members and Mike's, rigs and lenses yeah. on the iPhone. And yep. It's like, so you're just saying like you've replaced the camera body with an iPhone, but you're running it like a movie set and you mm -hmm. still want it to look like a movie. You know, the point is the most boring and name point possible. It's just iPhones could look almost like a movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, that's what you're telling people. Yeah. It's like, it's like, shoot on iphone and shoot it vertically shoot it like sh like leave it raw like don't grade it don't light it like like make it because iphone like and phone in general not just iphone but like it's like so relevant to how we lead our lives mm -hmm. you know it's so attached like seeing phone footage it like it's how we experience most documentary stuff we see as far as like you know, raw clips of like a public freak out or, mm -hmm. you know, this or that, or a tragedy or something. 
it's like we experience it through iPhones and it has all this ingrained power through that realness. Mm -hmm. And to take that away and just be like, hey, it looks kind of like a movie. It's yeah. just like so, so missing the point of like how good, that, how good it is that you can make a movie on an mm -hmm. iPhone, like how freeing and exciting that is because it introduces you to all these new potential types of movies, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it feeds back into that authenticity that's so powerful where mm -hmm. Hollywood can't always achieve that. When it's so yeah. done up, it's like, that's your that's your yeah. superpower that you have when you're releasing stuff yeah. on, on YouTube and shooting it through a phone or just any way. Well, it's like film, Film grain is an aesthetic. I feel mm -hmm. like iPhone digital grain is also has that kind of mm -hmm. unique mm -hmm. style or aesthetic you can lean into yeah. rather than being like, oh my gosh, it's not crystal clear yeah. and crisp and uh, just lean into the grain and let that be a character in the movie. Well, I can't tell you how many filters are out there that I see. I, I love collecting filters on, <laughs> on Instagram and TikTok, but like they're all grain, <laughs> VHS, yeah. Super 16, yeah. 16 mil, like all of it. And it's like, all right, the people don't care about a crisp image. I can't, I can't think of a single time I've watched a YouTube video and been like, oh, the footage is a little noisy. I don't want to yeah. watch this. Like yeah. that never happened. I was so, I watched one of your videos recently where it was uh, the GPS one where like take yeah. the phone out into the field and kill it. I was like, wow, that's a really grainy shot. I'm so happy you put that in yeah. there because I notice it because I, yeah. But yeah, yeah. it was like, man, that's so great. I bet no one cares. Yeah, it just goes so dark and yeah. I'm like, it's the best shot. Just, just crank it. I always say choose choose the performance, the emotional mm -hmm. over the technical. You know, if you're yeah. gonna if you if you got two options, it's like it's like an out of focus shot, but the performance is a ten out of ten. Mm -hmm. Or you got the focus right and it's a six out of ten. It's like put the out of focus one in. Yeah. Take the risk. Be imperfect. Be like there's this obscene thing in filmmaking that it has been established that the only possible thing you could do with a movie is make a perfect thing. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing that you're allowed to do with a movie is make a cinematically perfect piece. And anything that goes against that is a failure. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's like, it's like, why can't our movies be out of focus? Why can't things be in the frame that shouldn't be? Why can't you see the boom pole and get reminded of Mm -hmm. of film like of like uh the fact that you're watching a movie yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's so interesting to me that like the whole medium has been whittled down to like realism mm -hmm. it, it, so I, I just wrote this i'm kind of quoting a review i wrote on letterbox but <laughs> but i watched a b movie and i really enjoyed it even though like the technical aspects were like horribly done mm -hmm. and um I think that that was so freeing to me because I'm like, I, I was like, what was the comparison? The, the, like realism, like realism paintings were like this era of like art where like everything was like, it's like, okay, so art has been building up to just creating photographs, you know, mm -hmm. art built up to these perfect paintings where the lighting, the skin, everything looks real. and then art got interesting <laughs> like it's like it's like great you've shown you, you you took thousands of years to recreate how people look and oh look you could just look at them why why mm -hmm. do you why do i need this to show me that and then art went further and it was impressionism and all these weird things where it deconstructed everything and the cubism and you know it was, mm -hmm. it was like it was like non-representational and it was non you know and filmmaking is stuck in realism. It's stuck in this thing where, you know, you're trying to hide the fact that you're a filmmaker. You, yeah. Like a painter who's doing realism hides their brushstrokes. You're hiding the edits. You're hiding the fact that somebody was touching the camera. You're hiding. And, and filmmaking hasn't, there's been films that do it, but filmmaking cinema at large, what you see in a the theater, what you see on Netflix, hasn't explored that further step of like, what if we start deconstructing? What if we start saying like goodbye to like, you know, perfectly cut scenes, perfectly like shot scenes? What if we say goodbye to perfectly structured narratives? Mm -hmm. And um, I think the steps we've taken away from that in the mainstream are superficial at best because the real value is like looking at something like, you know, <laughs> like uh, I don't even know what. 
what would be a good example? Like a live stream and being like, damn, what a good feature film. You know, <laughs> like that's how far you Speaking can go. Speaking of Dan Lotz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like um, a live stream or like, or just like somebody's raw footage of their friend's wedding or something. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's a damn good movie. You know, yeah. if you just have that mentality, because it's like, that's where painting went. Art already went there. And filmmaking is just not going there in the mainstream. It's not taking that step to be like, wait, like where, why are we drawing these lines? And why are we drawing these, uh, these, uh, not, not drawing, why are we putting up these barriers for like entry and these barriers for perfection? Like you won't see a movie in theaters that has a, a scene with bad audio. And it's mm -hmm. like, why not? You know? Yeah. 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 Well, you said something too about like, this is my kind of TED Talk soapbox that I always bring up is, I think that the over-reliance on narrative and the perfect Hollywood traditional 3 act structure, I think that is really stunted filmmaking as a whole mm -hmm. because we look at movies not as a, not as a movie, but we look at it at, as like a narrative or a story or the script, like a movie, like the mentality is a movie is only as good as its screenplay. And I think mm -hmm. then, well then that's just literature that's not what makes movies movies that's not filmmaking to me um which it might be to some people i guess it's all subjective but yes i wish people experimented more with what film and cinema could be rather than just be like three-act structure inciting incident character b story all that kind of stuff perfect audio perfect like it all has to there's no such thing as a perfect movie yeah, yeah. once people accept that then it's like Okay, you're free. Focusing on the audience experience is far more important than anything else. Yeah. Or just the experience in general. And you know what? Sometimes it's okay to be like, screw the audience. I'm making this for me. I think that's just as valid as anything else. Yeah. And if the audience loves it, great. But yeah, if you're not enjoying it, like we've already retreading yeah. here. But yeah, if you're not enjoying it, then what's the point? Yeah. There's a lot of rambling going yeah. on. I've done most of it, but I'm sorry. But um, Well, it is your interview. Yeah. Have you guys seen uh, Not Now by Ethan Stevens? Yes. 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 We interviewed so, him. Yeah. 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 All right. Great. So um, it's a romance movie. It's on YouTube for free. Please watch and, it. Um, yeah. <laughs> here's my thought on it. I don't think, I think it's the perfect example of what we're talking about. Because to me, it's rough around the edges it's it's like you know i think the main character is sort of unlikable the narrative kind of falls under that it falls apart because of that because the main character it's like am i supposed to not like him he's kind of an asshole mm -hmm. and, but like but like then it has this one amazing scene where like there there's an argument i don't want to spoil it too much but i guess i'll spoil it because it's <laughs> But like, because whoever sees this is not going to remember the specifics. But it's between Max and Noah, mm -hmm. that his uh, coworker who yells at him, and then yeah. he has that discussion with the girl. And it, I'm like, I'm like, this whole movie that kind of had like hit and miss acting, hit and miss like writing, suddenly has this amazing scene, and it's just really well done, and it hits me. I'm like, wow, that's a great scene. Movie goes on, it, and then the final shot is this genius reincorporation where. It's like a repeat shot, but it goes a different way. You know, mm -hmm. if you know what I'm talking about. And yeah. I, I'm like, I'm like, why can't a movie just have two great ideas and be great for it? You know, mm -hmm. why does an entire product have to be flawless from start to finish? Why does, mm -hmm. why do you have to hit on like, you know, uh, there's how many great paintings in history were great because of an idea they introduced you know mm -hmm. it wasn't the best overall painting but it was the first to do something new you know mm -hmm. and then i see not now and like if i'm ob assessing it objectively i'm like yeah it's a flawed movie but it did these two things that genuinely took me back and i'm like mm -hmm. what are we watching movies for other than to be feeling something other than to be seeing something new mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that's just such a good example of that for me yeah yeah excellent well I think that's a great place to end it yeah unfortunately, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah but there's more more time to be had here yeah. let me just check oh yeah oh, we can yeah. wrap this up in a perfect amount of time <laughs> do you want to take us out since I entered us yeah sure uh so thank you for watching our interview with Joel Joel's a good friend again if you haven't seen his stuff check it out mm -hmm. um we'll put a link to his channel and his videos and all that stuff in the description and whatnot. Um, 
Do you want to leave the people with one last message in 30 seconds or less? 30 seconds or less. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Uh, make a movie. It's fun. And um, yeah.